World leaders must choose their words wisely. They don't just speak for themselves, they speak for a nation. So the last thing you want is a gaffe or an insult or worse, both. But Joe Biden did not get the memo. This week, he visited a war memorial in Pennsylvania. It is dedicated to soldiers of World War II. Among them was Biden's uncle, Ambrose J. Finnegan. He died fighting in the Pacific region. As for how he died, we let his nephew tell the story. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. He got shot down in New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Took a wild turn, didn't it? Biden says his uncle was flying over the Pacific. His plane crashed in Papua New Guinea. And then cannibals ate him. You know what this sounds like? A scary story your parents discuss at home. A story you decide is true and then narrate 70 years later as president. But why cannibals? Why not a legendary dog fight with Japanese fighters? Because Papua New Guinea did have cannibals. Some communities practiced it, not because they did not have food, but because it was tradition. They would cannibalize dead relatives out of respect. Of course, that does not happen today. Uh, but let's come back to Uncle Finnegan. If cannibals did not get him, how did he die? Well, here's what the U.S. government says. In 1944, Uncle Finnegan's plane was flying over the Pacific, but at low altitude. Both engines failed, so the plane's nose hit the water. Three men did not survive the crash, and among them was Biden's uncle. His body was never recovered from the area. But the statement does not mention cannibalism. So Biden was wrong about two things. The plane was not shot down, it had engine trouble, and his uncle was not cannibalized. His body just went missing. So Biden's story was all cooked up. And not for the first time, the U.S. president seems to get confused a lot. He's getting world leaders wrong. He's getting cities wrong. And he's getting the date wrong. Listen in. And I sat down and I said, America's back. And Mitterrand from Germany, I mean, from France, looked at me and said, uh, said, you know, what? Why? How, how long are you back for? <laughs> All right. God save the queen, man. Harder than getting a, a ticket to the Renaissance tour or, or, or Rip Britney's tour. Elect me. I'm in the 20, 20th century, 21st century. And I made it clear to Israelis, don't move on Haifa. I know what you're thinking. Nobody's perfect. Everyone mixes up names and places once in a while. Well, two problems here. One, Biden is not just anybody. He is the president of the United States, a country that is deeply involved in two wars. So he cannot afford this. And two, it's not once in a while. Biden keeps making such mistakes and some of them could have political consequences. Just consider the latest one. Papua New Guinea is a country in the Pacific. It's become a key strategic battleground. China is trying to make inroads there. So Biden must be on top of his game. He cannot afford to insult or offend their government. And he certainly cannot accuse their ancestors of eating his uncle. It's also perfect ammunition for his opponents. Look at what a recent poll found. 60% Americans doubt Biden's mental capacity. A recent investigation found his memory to be hazy and poor. So the concerns are valid. Now, Democrats will say Donald Trump is equally bad. Trump will mostly, most likely challenge Biden for the White House, and his gaffes are world famous. But Biden is the incumbent. He is also three and a half years older than Donald Trump. So the onus is on Joe Biden. He must prove that he's fit to serve on. We've always heard that election is all about numbers. Well, this time, that number could be age. 